the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Genesis chapter 17. You give the healing and the grace that our hearts hunger for. 17. We'll read verse 1 to 3 and then we'll jump to verse 7. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. We're not dealing with that, but I can stop here to talk all night. The word there is El Shaddai. That's where you get the word El Shaddai. Are we together now? I am the almighty God. He says, walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee. How? Exceedingly. Verse 3. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, Go to verse 7. I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, their generations, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. One more verse, 8. And I will give unto thee and thy seed after thee the land, wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God I appear to you and I tell you I am El Shaddai walk with me and I will make certain things possible in your life and not just your life it will affect your children remember what Psalm 112 says it says, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. Then it says, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. It says, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. The man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commands. I had a discussion yesterday with a dear lady that really provoked for me it it really challenged me to share the things that I'll be sharing and um, she communicated an observation and she told me she said apostle I have noticed that many of the brethren from Zaria when they go outside of this environment they are extremely spiritual they are men and women of character i mean you can look at them and just know that this man came from zaria but they are very poor they are very mediocre and they never are able to do anything well when it comes to do with other matters outside spirituality they are very very inefficient it was an observation and that really got to me I felt very responsible over that statement and I said why would this be so would it be a good news to know that someone came out from among us or from around this city where we are domiciled and 
that we do not see a manifestation of the whole counsel of God in the life of that person. Especially with the times that we live. I really got concerned because she observed that many of these brethren, many of them had fellowships. Is that correct? They had groups, whether church youth groups or some of them even had churches. So when it has to do with apportioning things spiritually, they usually are the center of attraction. In fact, to the point that when people just say, I, I, I am from Zaria, whether a student, whether one, even if you are an armed robber, you just say from Zaria, I mean, you are worthy of reception. But then the quality of their lives, the lives of their children, their families, some of them are maybe the first in their families to really take God seriously. And yet, the, 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 the evidences that should create conviction are not there. I was touched. I really was touched. I said, God, this cannot be your will. And I said, what could be wrong? The obvious answer is the men of God that have had the opportunity to communicate the truths of the word within this territory over time. That is the obvious explanation. It means that there has been something about the lopsidedness of our spiritual communication because men reflect the voices that they heard. Is that true? So that means that somewhere in our spiritual communication, either through honest ignorance or through the trivializing of certain dimensions of the kingdom experience, the saints were not properly equipped to both be spiritual and to be responsible. Maybe I would put it this way, that we focused on the issues that matter to godliness, but we forgot the issues that matter to life. Yet the Bible says his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto both life and godliness. It will be wickedness to rejoice at a Christian who cannot pay his child's school fees. This is more than finance. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will be wicked for a Christian who malhandles his wife, although he's a tongue-talking prayer warrior who belongs to a church, but because he was not equipped to know that your family life and the quality of it is also a measure of your knowing God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen, as I grow in leadership and the privilege of influence over people, I am learning that any side of the, the kingdom life you neglect, you will see a multitude of people reflect that lopsidedness. The church in Nigeria, the church in Africa is largely responsible for the, the quality of the lives of people in Africa because Africa is a very religious continent. Every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Saturday, there are vigils, there are fasting programs, there are more committed people in the church in Africa than any other part in the world. Our level of spiritual committal is worth um, commending. Yet, we are obvious reflections of the lopsidedness that has come largely from the pulpit. This is an uncomfortable truth, but any and every man of God that truly fears God must take this as a responsibility. That the reason why something may be going wrong, it may be that I have not been able to communicate this dimension of God. So the members believe, but they believe an error. So they become that error. Because whatever you believe, you become. I got very challenged. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been able to excel and do the things that God has granted us grace to do because by the privilege of God's grace, He has allowed us to capture in our lives all the areas and the dimensions that are required for efficiency. From administration to leadership to the pastoral work to a system of mentorship and continuity. Are we together now? To security, to finance, and all of that. 
So the results that we celebrate by the grace of God is not just an issue of the will of God. It is the product of systems that were believed and received and engaged. This is the result. And where we will go from here will also be a reflection of the things we have learned and are learning or the things we are ignoring. It, is, it will be my greatest pain as a man of God to see that a few years from now, when you rise, that you will be walking through life and destiny limping. And the reason for that limp will be something I did not teach you. Something I trivialized that was important for your life. If I fail as a person and you succeed in receiving the whole counsel of God, your success will turn me into a success again. Are we blessed? Let me say this before I start teaching. You are not qualified to create your curriculum as a student. Listen, listen. Don't, don't just be too quick to write. Just try to listen. One of the reasons I believe why many people are not efficient, first spiritually and then in other areas of their lives is they sit as students and they write what they believe should be their curriculum. It's wrong. It's pride. Those who are in school, when you come into a class, a level, a lecture hall, you sit quietly and trust the wisdom of the lecturer. Am I correct? The lecturer comes in and whether he looks like what you expected or not, you trust the fact that if that institution could employ him, then there was a system of vetting. Nobody was just brought on the street. Paul, a man, approved of God. He, did, he was not just recruited by will. There was a system of vetting and accreditation. Are we together now? And then the lecturer now tells you, these are the topics or the courses we are going to cover. Write. And usually you will find a lot of arrogant students who will not write and say, no, no, no. That thing is not supposed to be there. This person is probably in 100 level or secondary school or wherever. And that man who is talking may be a doctor or a professor. Just because he sounds like you doesn't mean you are at the same level. There is a history that you have no idea of. Even if you don't respect the man, respect the history. Are we together now? And then he begins to teach and mentor you. And to the degree to which you pay attention, it will shock you that you are becoming like him. You get to a point where you so become like him that a group of individuals accredit you and they award you a system of certification that now qualifies you it doesn't stop you from learning, but it qualifies you to be an authority within the context of what you studied. This is how we grow in the spirit. Many believers sit down and choose and say, no, this issue of prayer, we are not supposed to be praying this way. Even me, my spirit, I don't feel it. That person who is talking doesn't know anything about the power of God nor the grace of God. Does not understand anything about the anointing. Yet he's already writing a book in his mind on prayer and vetting who should you know teach that person cannot even pray for 20 minutes and yet he believes he's an authority in prayer the same thing with the teaching of the word the same thing with the issue of wealth and abundance and a good life and all of that the challenge has been that many students in the school of the spirit choose the courses they want to offer and leave the rest. The curriculum has been preset that if you attend all the lectures, it will make you become certain things. Remember our scripture that is almost a memory verse here, that I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. There are many precious pastors men of god who will not pay attention to certain dimensions of the kingdom life and then as their ministries begin to grow the lapse in that knowledge begins to reflect are we together yes i give you an instance if you are say for instance a man of god who does not pay attention 
to the quality of family life simply because the people who are your congregation at that time are children and students you forget that the father today was the child of yesterday and if you do not teach them by the time they get into their family lives all that will happen in that family is a crusade and a prayer conference because that's exactly what you have taught they can only do what they know is that true that's our generation i mean this is this is the next generation that's like samuel <laughs> telling eli i hear you is god speaking to us so it's important as believers that we open ourselves to the full counsel of god i don't know how many of you can walk on one leg indefinitely if you are playing sports that's a different thing but in life and destiny to walk on one leg continually you can't do much and the pressure will even hurt you is that true you need to have that balance and stability and this is what by the grace of god we seek to provide week in week out and that includes tonight are you ready to receive now lord i humble myself to receive your word can you pray that one prayer Just pray that simple prayer. I cast my crowns before the highest royalty. I am undone before your royal majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the king. You're the king of kings and lords of lords. Write it down. The warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Please, I want to beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you tonight. The warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 8. Please let's read it together. The warfare dimension. Make sure you write the topic. The warfare. I want to introduce you to a very foreign dimension of the blessings of God that many, many believers do not know. And this has been responsible for the limitations in the lives of families in the lives of individuals you see what is happening in our nation now there is a lot of fear and listen the Lord showed me something I, I hope that in one of the days I will have the opportunity to share I saw something in a vision that made me fear about certain things that was coming on the body of Christ it's not exactly negative but it will have a negative effect. Let's continue. One, two, read. Go up to the mountain, uh huh, and bring wood. Stop. Stop. The prophet is writing by the Spirit. First instruction go up to the mountain. Second instruction bring wood. What is your purpose of going up the mountain? To bring wood. <laughs> Just follow me carefully. I don't know what wood is doing in the mountain. Because at the last time I checked, you don't grow woods on the mountain. The Bible says, go up to the mountain and bring 
wood and then use that wood to build the house not a house use the wood you get up the mountain to build the house and i will take pleasure in that house that was built from the wood that was gotten up the mountain and then he says and i will be glorified saith the lord go up to the mountain koinonia and bring wood use the wood that you bring to build my house are we together now of course prophetically he was talking about physical temples but now you know that the house of god is not a physical structure you know that so every time god talks about building his house he's talking of building his ecclesia you understand that theologically speaking the house of god today does not mean a building or a church it does not even just mean systems it means people so it takes wood to build people we all as living stones build into a spiritual house are we together now tonight go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified when my house is built listen very carefully there are there are many instructions about the building of the lord's house and one of it he tells us that it takes wood whatever that wood is we know that is something you do not yet have and so he says the location of that wood is up the mountain not to the forest go up the mountain listen carefully and get wood and then with that wood go and build my house matthew chapter 5. quicken our eyes to see in the name of jesus christ jesus was teaching in what we call the beatitudes he was teaching the principles of the kingdom in fact let's start from four matthew chapter four what we know as the temptation of jesus now there are three levels of temptation that the devil presented to jesus i'm interested in the third one the first temptation had to do with your individual hunger are we together now jesus had finished praying and fasting 40 days and the first person he would meet would be satan himself and then satan tells him turn this stone to bread second temptation he takes him up the second temptation had to do with his spiritual convictions are we together he took him to a holy city satan holy city satan holy city took jesus up a holy city and set him on a pinnacle and said jesus fall down throw yourself to the ground it is written he shall put his angels so it was a temptation that related to his spiritual life that related to his spiritual conviction the first was his hunger his individual life and then he says no i've gone past that level then the second thing affected his faith but the third was a very strange one and that's what i want us to look at matthew chapter four if god is blessing you say amen, amen. verse eight we are reading to 11 the third temptation read with me we'll read verse 8 and then i'll continue one to read again the devil taketh him up into stop not towards into the devil taketh him who is the him your jesus taketh him into an exceeding high mountain and what happened when they got to that mountain he stood from that mountain and saw the glory of the entire earth that there is a mountain a man can stand and from that mountain you can see the glory of the whole earth this is the mountain that satan took jesus 
There were many mountains, but he knew only one would be worth tempting Jesus in. And he took Jesus to that mountain. The Bible calls it an exceeding high mountain. And then he showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Next verse. And saith to him, ah, all these things, what things? The kingdoms and the glories I will give thee. So the mountain is a place of exchange. Listen, remember, don't forget our scripture. Well, well, I'm building something here. Go up to the mountain. Something you will do in the mountain will give you wood. Use that wood and come down. Come and build the house of God. And the Bible says God will be glorified. So Satan is negotiating a transaction here. But there was a location. He said, Jesus, I want to talk to you. But let's go up the mountain. We don't do these kinds of discussion on a plain land. He took him to an exceeding high mountain where it was only two of them. And then he says, this is, I want to give. That one is a deception. Because when you give something and demand something, it's not giving. It's business. He used a very deceptive terminology. He says, I will give thee if thou will fall down. I will give you pure water if you will give me hundred naira. Is, is, that, is that charity? No. Satan is negotiating something with Jesus, your Jesus. And look at the interesting system. He starts by marketing something for him. He says, before we talk, see first. So that you will believe me, look at the kingdoms. And then look at their glories. The wealth. And then he says, now that you have seen and are convinced, let us discuss. This is my proposal. I will give you access from this mountain to all these kingdoms. They will be at your beck and call. What I will get in return, listen carefully, is that you will fall down and worship me. Now imagine, God forbid, but just imagine that Jesus agreed. What do you think would have happened? Jesus would have come down that mountain with strange influence that you cannot explain. You, now you were not there. All you know is that he bowed down and said, Satan, I'm more interested in the kingdom and the glory. Oh, King Satan, I acknowledge you as my Lord. I give you my heart. And Satan says, okay, as I agreed. If Satan tempted Jesus, how many other people has he taken to that mountain? To say, come, forget about this. Let me show you how things happen in this earth. And then he says, look at this. I will give you these kingdoms and the glory. Bow down to me. Not everybody will say no. Some people will say yes and will say this is the deal. Here you have, here you have. Go down. Immediately they go down. In two months, their albums are all over the world. Regardless of what they sing. And you say, my God, this guy is so skilled. No. Something happened up the mountain. I pray that God will open your eyes to understand what I'm teaching you tonight. There are certain dimensions of the supplies of God that cannot happen by doing business with men. You must do business with spirits. I cast my crown before. Listen. The highest royalty. Remember that's what Satan wanted. Bow down and worship me. Satan has been obsessed with allegiance. And loyalty the kingdoms did not mean anything to him the glories did not mean anything to him but he knows that it is the system that men need and so what he decided to do was to make sure that he has control of those systems and then he will continue to call men to say let us negotiate what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world question where did that business happen that he gained the whole world because that is a business terminology 
What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Where is the law? Show me where men gain the whole world. Do they gain it in a bank? Do they gain it in an investment house? Show me where men gain the whole world and give up their soul. That business, when you get there, the commodity is your soul versus the world. Not your product. Your soul and the world. 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 So you now know that it says, I wish above all things that you prosper. But I hope your soul too was not lost while you are prospering. I hope that the way you prospered was God's own way. I know how you have prospered. When your soul does not prosper, it was exchanged for your wealth. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Yabone naka Sujada nena Sarkin salama Sarkin My concern is not your prosperity. I can know what kind of exchange happened by looking at your soul. Immediately I look at your money. The next thing I should look at is your soul. If I find out that your spiritual life went down, there was an exchange that happened on the mountain. Whether you are aware or not, you have followed a system that has sold your soul. There are many, sit down please. There are many men of God. There are many businessmen. There are many captains of industry that gave, received the world and sold their soul. This temptation Satan gave Jesus was not the last time he would give it. He has been giving it till today. So he says, I wish above all things that you will prosper but i will know how the prosperity came not by looking at the money but looking at your soul when i i see both your soul and your pocket rising i know where that grace came from it can't be the devil the devil will never allow your pocket and your soul to rise at the same time so i look at your prosperity and then i look at your soul I see that in your rising, you gave up your values. You gave up your character. You gave up your family. You gave up your integrity. I know that there is a negotiation happening. You are giving your soul for mundane things. Are we together? Look what Jesus did. Verse 10. Ah. Jesus said, get thee then, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. What was Satan looking for? Allegiance. Satan does not need money. He does not want money. So, Apostle, why is it that Satan, why is it that there is difficulty in meeting our bills at home? Satan knows that men cannot endure hardship indefinitely. So he manipulates the economy and waits for you on that mountain. He knows that when the pain becomes too much and your church cannot build, the pastor will say, I thank God for this. But I prophesy, Sam, bring one million. Remember, that's not how he started. But because of the pain, we need money. Generator needs to be fueled fast. And now I'm at a point, we brought a man of God abroad and we cannot pay him. So Sam, bring one million. Bring two million. So I see the church's financing rising, but I look at the soul of the members. So I know that an exchange has happened. The pastor negotiated an exchange. I, I, I'm not saying this in a critical way. The greatest dread of Satan is that you prosper while your soul prospers. What then is his gain? Think how annoying it will be for me. As a businessman, this is what I'm selling. Look up, please. And then, 
I see you hold both money and my product. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, you think what that will do to me. My advantage has been ruined. You have shown me I don't need you. That's the statement that this is happening. And so when you can have a prosperous soul and you are empowered economically, are we together? You get up in the morning and say, my children, we are waiting upon the Lord today. Yet the increment in the school fees does not affect the prayer because the resources are there. Glory be to God. Satan says, what then is my entry point in this family? Thank you. Is God speaking to someone? What shall it profit a man? Please listen to this message. Because I promise you, every one of us, you will climb that mountain. I got, listen, listen, listen. You may climb that mountain and come back with wood. Or you can climb that mountain and come back as a soulless person. That on that mountain, Satan will give you mundane things. And after 30 years of wealth and affluence and increase, you will find out that you are on your way to hell. This message is a deliverance to the body of Christ. Listen to me. I can tell you that Satan hates what you are hearing. I call it the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Where the product is your soul versus the world. Hmm. Your soul. Did you ever hear that they sell souls? Hey, Jimmy is a businessman. Where do you say? I know they sell pure water. Is that true? I know they sell clothes. But he's saying there is a marketplace on earth where the commodity of exchange is the soul of man. Not slave trade was only a mimicking of something that was already in the realm of the spirit. If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hands If it's not by your spirit Don't let me have it Everything I need is in you Hallelujah Revelations 18, read for me from verse 9. We are reading 9 to 13. Babylon, as a woman, that Jezebel that sits upon the horse, the Bible tells us she's not only a prophetess, she's a businesswoman. Babylon, the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, is falling. For in one hour is your judgment come. 11. And the merchants, who are those who will cry? The businessmen of the earth. How did they become rich? The Bible says the, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Their prosperity was tied to their, their connection with her. Whatever happened to Babylon happened to their business. Are you following me please? Hmm. What are her merchandise? Look at, these are the products that this woman deals in. Are you ready, believers? Number one, gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, tyan wood, all manner of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, tartine, mm. cinnamon, odors, ointment, frankincense, wine. Babylon also sells anointing. Oil. Did you see it there? And fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses. Help me now. Read together. And chariots 
and slaves and souls of men. Babylon. Any one of these products you want, she can give you. Give me the souls of men so that my track, when I produce anything, it will get everywhere. And she says, the condition, bow to me. That exchange happens on that mountain. While it's happening, you don't know. The next thing, you just sit down and find out that your soul is glued to their music. The, you, you, there's nothing you can do. You just find out that you buy. You are even minding yourself. The next thing, you are nodding your head. And, ah, God, forgive me. You don't even know what is happening. The souls of men. What kind of a businesswoman is this? That does both physical and spiritual business. Sells gold. Sells anointing for you. You want anointing for ministry. She can give you too. <sighs> but you always know. That it is her product. By one single litmus test. As the wealth grows. Your soul dies. Your wealth and your soul. Cannot grow together when you do business with her. I wish above all things. Koinonia, tell me you are getting blessed tonight. So when your soul is going down and then there is increase coming, could it be that an exchange has happened on that mountain? What shall it profit a man if he gains, gains, loses, gains loses business terminologies you can gain the whole world and then you lose your soul is god speaking to us there is an assault of darkness listen over the body of christ and let me tell you this Many people in this country do not know how to prosper God's way. And that includes men of God. Listen to me. I have a responsibility to teach you the truth. Many people do not know how to prosper God's way. And right now that the systems that provide for things like corruption and the rest, the civilization of the world is making men more vocal now. The things they could not say before, they can now say. That means if the truth is not taught, the church alongside the territory is in trouble. There are many men today who became rich by stealing and investing. They don't know anything. They cannot mentor you to be wealthy. They only stole money from some political scoffers and then had that money and had a business partner who helped them to invest the money. And now they are rich. You may call them businessmen. You may call them millionaires and billionaires. But they have negotiated something. They cannot raise another generation. So right now there's confusion. People love God but they are hungry. Hunger is moving like the angel of death. Are we together now? One by one is meeting families. Some of you as you are seated right here. If I told you, stand up, let me give you a prophecy that tomorrow will change your financial life. You will be surprised that without your will, you will find yourself standing up. That's to tell you how hard this thing is becoming. Are we together? There are students probably sitting here now that it will take the grace of God. I cannot tell you, literally without exaggeration, hundreds of text messages by people Apostle, help our family, our rent, our this. Apostle, we just finished three days dry. You see it there. That thing is supposed to be a mockery to the name of the Lord. We just finished three days dry. And God could not solve our hunger problem. And then the people continue to contemplate. What kind of God is this? Oh? And Satan says, that's exactly what I want. Because let me tell you. When, come Sam, when Sam continues to say, help me, help me, and I say I cannot help him, one day he will stop calling me. He stops calling me because someone else has held his hand and says, let's go to the mountain. You can't keep begging forever. Let me show you. Give me your soul and I will give you tea and bread. 
He will try it one year and it will not work. He will say, okay, go. I will come back. He will wait till the hunger increases and say, I'm still here. A day will come, that hunger will hit you. And like Esau, you will say, please, what is a portage? What, what do you think happened to Esau? Do you not know that Satan waited until Esau was hungry? Satan always comes to men when they are hungry. He waits until you are hungry. Then he comes with his suggestion. It's a business strategy. Any businessman will tell you that people don't negotiate at a point of convenience. You wait until there is a need. Then you say, okay, here I am again. I told you to sell me the land. You say it was 400,000. Okay, it's because you have food. When the economy hits you, then I bring 250 cash. And then you say, Kai, my wife, what did you say? That Just bring this thing. That's what Satan does. So as a young student who is being rewarded by your parents, you don't sow yet, you reap. And then you are laughing and say, all oh, this finance thing, I don't, I don't mind. And then the next thing, you see a lady and you want to marry her and Satan says, exactly, let the plan work. He will help facilitate your marriage, not because he likes your marriage. He knows that when you are married, a child will come and the reality will dawn on you. Now you marry as a prayer warrior and a war giant. And then your wife says, my husband, sorry, my parents are coming and we need a place to keep them. Am I God? Am I the only person on earth? See that? And before you know it, your life begins to be in shambles. One day you will find yourself browsing the internet. Mantras for wealth. Enter. You, you will never believe you would have done that zodiac sign the palm of my hand what does it mean let me know whether they cost me from bed and they say put your age and you say I, I don't even i'm not sure they told me i'm 30 but the way i'm suffering is as if i'm 40. let me try 40 and see you see that you are laughing but you know you do it because it's the pain how many prayer leaders how many pastors, by the grace of God, send me text messages all the time saying, Apostle, I don't, I'm, I'm about to give up. People may not know. They just see me praying and preaching, but I'm tired. Let me tell you the truth. I say it before God, and I say it truthfully. This challenged me because I said it means there's something wrong. Let me tell you this. If you sit down and see your child dying, you will not know when you will do something you never believe you cannot do. You may not do it for yourself. Was it not two women that ate their children? What made them eat their children? Hunger. They ate one whole child. A mother that cannot forget her suckling child didn't cut herself. They would have cut one leg. At least the person is still alive. But they ate the baby alive. And the next day it was to eat the child. Look at the, from Genesis to Revelation. See what hunger did to men. Study what hunger did to men from Genesis to Revelation. Was it not because of hunger Israel went to Egypt? Who took them to Egypt? Not demons. God's covenant people went to Satan. They said, buy us, money failed. Hunger can take men from Israel to Egypt. Are there not places that some of us are walking today? That you sit down and say, but why should I be walking here? I know what happens in this corporation. I know that God is not glorified. I know they are serving the devil. I know that the products and services they are involved in, my, it violates my faith. But the day you talk to your husband or wife that I think I should live here, the day you say that thing again, is with the back of my hand I will slap you. Did you see the last PTA letter of the child? And Satan says, that's it. And a time will come out of that pain and frustration the young lady will call her ex boyfriend and say just to know if you are fine it's a lie hunger taking men from israel to egypt are we together this is what i saw coming to nigeria this is what i saw coming to africa I saw a time, a not too distant time, when hunger is driving people to do things you cannot believe. Because 
the many doors of corruption were just closed this is what i saw in my vision and because most men only corrupt they steal and share and then they steal and share then when you get your own you quickly manage it well but now that the door is closed people are saying what do we do and i saw people going to this woman to say i need members if i don't get members where will i get offering and then where will i get tight to be able to survive as a church so babylon let's negotiate bring members to get more overflows my soul will be what will be in exchange if you ever say this cannot happen you are joking do you know the desperation do you know what men can do when they are desperate read your bible and see what they were willing to go back to egypt when they were hungry they left egypt i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed when they were hungry they said we remember we remember the garlic we hunger will make you forget the promised land hunger will make you love your yesterday more than your tomorrow i remember when i had this boyfriend i wasn't going to heaven but i was in heaven on earth now that i gave my life to christ and left this guy look at how miserable my life is oh let us go back there is garlic there is cucumber is it not in your bible and onions at least we have food to eat moses we are hungry was it not on account of supply that moses missed the promised land have you forgotten that they were thirsty and they needed water and they had been nagging at moses no leader can survive a hungry people I don't mean spiritually hungry they will nag at you and disturb you day and night you know there are people who come to my house they just come and knock they knock the gate and stand there I just open the door and they say I'm hungry sometimes they come as a group group of children and just knock and stand there do what you would do with us we are hungry that's what happened to Moses and Moses was, God told him, speak to the rock. He was human. Your humanity plus hunger is not good. And he struck the rock. And God said, no, this is it. You are not going to the promised land. It was hunger that made them build an idol. They said, Moses, we are tired. We are not sure. That is this your God you saw in the bush that brought us out. Please, Aaron, come. Put jewelries together. We will sacrifice our gold. Build us an idol so that we will dance and say you are the one who brought us out of Egypt. Was it not on account of hunger many parents now stop going to church? And they say, where was God when they sacked me from Railway Corporation 1999? Where was God when I was crying with my sick child on the bed? needing 150,000 to I I prayed and I called on pastors they prayed and I watched my child breathe his last breath on something that could be solved don't talk to me about church again you come to preach and they show you the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and tell you look before you were born I was a prayer coordinator hunger made me leave the place of God to Egypt You don't control people by controlling them. You control them by controlling the economy of their territory. The rich rule it over the poor. And the borrower will always be slave to the lender. You will thank me for what I'm teaching you tomorrow. You will thank me. Because you are listening to this message for your children. You are not just listening for yourself. It will take a selfish and a wicked person... Do not listen to these truths. Then don't have children. Because woe betide any man. I say this respectfully to our parents and the elderly people here. But most of our parents made this mistake. And that is the, the mistake that has produced a negative history. For many of the young people seated here looking at me. It was hunger that created the episodes of pain. That we do not even want to remember about our lives. Don't transfer that to your children. Hunger made people to marry those who are not the will of God. 
Hunger made people to be relocated to geographic territories that was not the will of God. Hunger made people to change their age. You will see somebody 50 years by instincts. You know this person is 50 years. He said, no, he's 27. He, he, you, you see that? How many footballers have their true age? I'm so, so you don't think I'm just talking. That's what hunger can do. How many people join occultic fraternities? The fact that they are growing in, I hope I'm right. I heard that early this year, they were stealing ladies' underwears or something like that. Now, listen, that is not a good news. It's to tell you that men are not ashamed to prosper. Did you hear what I said? Let a lady pile her clothes and say you should wash and you see if you are angry. But the native doctor said, go and carry not, not the head tie, carry the underwear and bring it. And the man is not embarrassed. You can pick that underwear as a graduate, as a bobo, and bounce with it to a shrine because you are desperate for prosperity. Which one is easier, to believe God or to do that nonsense? What shall it profit a man? I don't want to get to a point where at the end of my life I have acquired cars and houses koinonia has risen and I look at myself and I look at my soul and my soul is dead have you ever heard that anybody died and his money went with him koinonia talk to me have you ever heard that anybody died and his real estate disappeared and followed him in the grave any prosperity that demands your soul to get is of the devil let me tell you many ways that this business because this business has franchise and one of the way the franchise works is by occupying you with activities that will not let you have time for god is that not your soul being sold it doesn't have to be an occultic negotiation by the time you have to forfeit a Sunday service where your word is about to come because if you don't, your boss will sack you. That's your soul going. You do that for one year, you find out you can't remember one memory verse again. You are praying and you will be quoting wise sayings instead of scriptures because you have not hidden any word in your heart again. What shall it profit a man? I want to show you one more mystery and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Tonight's call is a serious wake-up call for the sake of our children and our children's children and for the sake of our soul. Why do you think the Antichrist will leave all other things and go to economy? When you talk about the mark of the beast, what did the Bible say the mark was meant for? For buying and selling. Not for going to school not for bible study the devil knows that where he will get people how did they get nigerians to register bvn was it not by the threat of their accounts did did any police carry cane to pursue any man register your bvn or your account will be frozen and people just come and say please what i did my bvn in the night they opened the bank for me by 8 30 because I couldn't come in the day. People will lay and harass me. 8.30 in the night, they opened the bank for me. I said, Apostle, come and do your BVN. As anointed, as holy, I still did BVN in the night. When Satan comes to you and finds out that your individualism is not your concern, he will attack your spirituality. When he attacks your spirituality by making you fall from that height. Remember that was the temptation. Fall from that height, God will protect you. And when you survive that, he knows where to wait for you. He says, keep praying. You will meet me at one junction that is the only road. <laughs> only road. He meets you at that junction. It's not a T-junction, it's a bend. And he waits there and says, now, let me negotiate your child's school fees let me negotiate give me your prayer life 
and I will give you real estate. Give me the health of your ch Have you not heard of people who have sold different parts of their body for money? Please talk to me. Is it a lie? Give me your fasting and your appetite for God and I'll make sure I give you a job in Dubai. And you say, is that the condition? Satan will not come and say, give me your soul like your soul, your heart. Uh -uh. Give me your commitment in the house of God and I will increase your money by 50,000. And he said, commitment, go places. Satan, give me. And Satan is an honest businessman. You will get it. He will give you the 50,000. Then remove commission that will make everything remain 10,000. And say, if you want, I'm still here for business. And before you know it, from settling near Sodom, you will be in the middle of Sodom. What took you there? Why do you think the Bible says whose God is their belly? The logical thing should be whose God is their brain. But he said, whose God? Hunger can be a God. And it can make men do things they never planned to do. Are we together? I was sharing with the leaders a little bit about the cost for just transporting people every meeting day and every other time the school of ministry everything for one year is what some people use to build houses but that's what a part of the budget of a department and never has anybody come to say stand up all of you drop one one thousand by force if you don't drop no prophecy or no seeing apostle never will it be never if you ever hear it anywhere no you are dreaming wake up that i ever tell anybody here is my bucket drop two naira and then you see me to receive prayer may god take my life a day to doing that you won't say amen because you are kind i want to make heaven i will pray it Now, don't get me wrong. There are people who are experts who provide value and are paid and blessed for it. That's not what I'm saying. When people dispense value that is packaged, they should be rewarded. So don't confuse that with what I'm saying. I'm saying to say, bring money as the basis for prayer. No, sir. Thy money perish with you. That's what he told by Jesus. Are we together? But if I don't have food to eat, all this mouth that I've carried my big mouth to make, I would twist that statement by the time hunger is serious. If your mother calls you and your mother says, my son or my daughter, is this how you are going to leave me? Remember the womb that bought you. will carry a basket and stand there and say, what is, come and drop your money, Jerry. I'm, I'm preaching. I'm doing everything for you free. Most people who do what they do are not bad. They just do not know the systems that bail men out. Say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. My, soul my soul and my pocket, and my pocket will, both be will both be healthy. What shall it profit a man? If you are going into ministry, please listen to me with all your heart. Because if you believe your, your ministry, you know men of God have funny ways they believe ministry will be financed. They just believe one day one arbitrary kingdom financier will just evolve from somewhere and just say you keep preaching while i keep giving you money <laughs> my brothers and my sisters god gives us wisdom to save us from trouble the bible says wisdom is a defense is that true there are sermons you will never be able to preach when you become a beggar are we together? Yes. May you never get to a point, man of God, where your members become the Holy Spirit. Where somebody comes and says, here's a check of 10 million. I notice that people don't respect elders and that becomes your message. The title of my message as revealed by the Holy Ghost is respect. No, it came from an angry rich man. Go up the mountain and bring wood and build my house and I will take pleasure in it. Are we together now? 
Let me show you something. Thank you, Sam. Ezra chapter 3. King of my life, you are my all, and I live for you alone. You're the king of my life, you have my all, and I live my life for you. My heart is yours, my mind is yours, my will is yours, you're the king of my life. Now let me show you a very deep mystery. That mountain. Ezra will read one to three and then you will jump to seven. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man in Jerusalem. Reading to three and then we we'll jump to seven. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the, the priest and Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and his brethren, and built the altar of God, of the God of Israel, and to offer bond offerings thereon and it is written in the as it is written in the law of moses the man of god three and they set the altar upon his basis and fear was upon them because the people of the, because of the people of those countries and they offered bond offerings thereon unto the lord and bond offerings morning and evening go to seven now i want you to listen carefully look up and they gave money also to the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre. Take note. I want to show you something powerful. To bring what? Cedar trees from Lebanon. Go up the mountain. Bring wood. Build me a house. Now it says they gave them money to go and bring cedar trees. According to the grant that they had had of Cyrus, the king of Persia. But notice, they did business with certain people. Now, not exchanging their soul. But the Bible says, unto them of Zidon and unto them of Tyre. Follow me. Isaiah 23. You will notice the Bible very strangely talks of a city called Tyre and Sidon. Have you read your Bible? The Bible talks a lot about these cities. I will show you that these cities represented the center of commerce and economy in the earth. Isaiah 23, the first three verses. The burden of where? Tyre. Now look up please. We are walking the word. Haul ye the ships of Tarshish. For it is laid waste so that there is no house. No entering in from the land of Shittim. It is revealed to them. We are reading to three. Two. Be still ye inhabitants of the isle. Thou whom the merchants of Zidon. That pass over the sea have replenished. Verse three. I wish we could read it. In amplified or any other version he said and by the great waters the seed of Sihon the harvest of the river is her revenue and she Tyre is the merchant the word mat there is the merchant of the nations there's no other version you can find oh dear okay it says was Tyre's revenue can you see there he said and she Tyre became the merchandise that is the city the center of economy of the nations are we together what was satan called in isaiah 28 who is the king of tyre talk to me who is the king of tyre the very king of that mountain satan himself the governor the protector 
of that mountain. Tyre and Sidon. The economic center of the earth. Satan allows other demons and other spirits to occupy other mountains. But he takes the mountain of economy and becomes the king of Tyre. I will wait there. Whoever comes will meet me there. He will not meet a demon. He will not meet an archangel. He will not meet anyone. He will meet Satan himself. Listen, I can tell you where Satan is. It's not in your village. No. I know where he is. He's at the center of where the exchange happens for the house of God to be built. I know where Satan is. Satan is where your resources should come from to make sure your family stays in peace. That's where he is. I know where Satan is. Satan is at the point where your business needs to grow so that it will cause you to negotiate. Satan is obsessed about economy. My brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you do not sustain an ability, I'm going to round up tonight by teaching you the system, the warfare dimension upon that mountain because although satan is there god still says climb the mountain climb the mountain was he not on the mountain both elijah and the prophet met but elijah returned back victorious was he not on the mount of transfiguration jesus climbed and he returned back and together with the three guys many things happened in the mountain and one of it is the victory of the saints economically silver is mine the gold is mine I, I i i pray from the depth of my heart that you will understand what i've said and see the value of it in your life it will surprise you my brothers and my sisters when men are leaving god selling their souls to the devil and you stand together with your wife and your children and you say lord i give you the glory in fact, let's go to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. Nebuchadnezzar, the king. Just go back to, to uh, King James so that we'll hurry up. We're praying. Is God blessing someone? Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of what? Talk to me, please. An image of gold. Whose height is 90 feet. And he set it up in a plain called Dura in the province of Babylon. Read on. The Bible says, and Nebuchadnezzar, now look at this. Nebuchadnezzar first set up a 90 feet statue of pure gold. Then look at all the people he gathered. Look at the quality of men that he gathered to come and bow down to that thing. Are you ready? He sent a letter to gather what? The princes. Read on. And the governors. And the captains and the judges, judiciary and the treasurers and the counselors and the sheriffs, local government chairmen and the rulers of provinces to come to the dedication. If you were not influential, you were not invited. Satan wants to dedicate his image in the land and handpick certain people to say you are invited. Listen. It was on account of that that certain gentlemen let me show you yourself now verse 3 blessed be the name of the Lord when we read verse 3 let's go to verse 6 very instructive statement then the princes the governors the captains judges treasurers counselors sheriffs rulers were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up and they stood before please go back to verse 3 let's finish first and they stood before the image that nebuchadnezzar had set up verse 6 now read it for me this is exactly why i am preaching all that i've been preaching read if you're a christian and whoso falleth not down and worshiped shall the same hour be cast into the midst why is economists use the term financial meltdown? Not financial cool 
cool off or ice ice uh, what do we call it now financial meltdown is that true If God grants grace, I will teach you something powerful. Because you know, the Holy Spirit just ministers something. You know when Jesus crossed to the other side, the pigs were on a mountain. That, and they possessed, the pigs were roaming around the mountain. Pigs in the Bible stand for unclean animals. They were on the mountain and there was a spirit in a madman. As soon as Jesus came, watch this. Immediately the the madman met Jesus when he casted out the demons. The demons said, don't take us out of here. And they entered the pigs and everything went down. Who were those who attacked Jesus? The merchants. They said, you are doing something to our economy. By delivering one person, something happened to their economy. They said, get out of this land quickly. It was not the politician. It was those who were in the economy that felt the heat. When you read in the Bible, there was a time they flogged Paul in the market square. They dragged him to a market square, not a police station, and flogged him in the market square. My brothers and my sisters, there are mysteries in our world. If it is economy you want to conquer, the little knowledge and the certificate you are holding will not go very far. If you listen to what I'm telling you, you will rise as if you are holding a charm. If you sit down there, this thing will squeeze you in a way. Whosoever will not fall down and bow and worship that image, the same hour, what is the punishment? Be cast into a financial recession. If you will not bow to God, then the devil does something to your finances. Seven, Jesus. <laughs> Mighty God. Let's go to verse eight. Wherefore, at that certain time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Nine. And they speak to the king Nebuchadnezzar. Listen carefully now. O king, live forever. Ten. O king has, has made a decree. Thou, O king, has made a decree that this and that and that and that happens. Eleven. And all of that, whosoever does not fall will do this. Verse 12. There are certain Jews. This is where we come in now. Listen carefully. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs. So they were men of influence. There are certain attacks that never come to you until you are influential. So the fact that it has not come does not mean it's just that you have not made any mark for the kingdom enough to warrant that attack. It's not a sign that your faith is working. There are many people, that because the devil just left you to do your thing, you believe that it's because of your intelligence. It's just that you are not making any mark whatsoever in the realm of the spirit. And so you are not disturbed. But the day God blesses you small, and they say you are now promoted to become a manager, that's the day you have a dream you never had. You just had that your father said he had the dream once, and you recorded it. On that day, a stranger comes and said, let me introduce myself to you. I appeared to your father 35 years ago. Look at his life. And I appeared to your mother 36 years ago. Now you have qualified for my appearance. By your promotion, you have gone too far. Let's talk. And you wake up, ah, blood of Jesus, I just bind you. And then the next thing, you go to the office the next day. And they say, sorry, some people stole money and they found some money on your desk. Go down. And the man says, I told you, bow to me or rise. But if you learn what I'm showing you now, you can stand and say, Satan, this is my money. This is my gold. But I cast my crown before the highest royalty. Satan, it's not that I'm too proud to bow. It won't be to you. My refusal to bow is not arrogance. It's that it can be to you. I cannot serve God and mammon. No, sir. Let it not be that I'm trying to run a parallel government with God. 
my refusal to bow is not pride but this is what I'm saying that there is one who is worthy of my praise <laughs> Sir King Salama, Sir King Alchanda, Yabone Naka, Yabone Naka, Sujada Naka, Sir King Salama, Sir King Alchanda. Listen. I come from a family where these forces don't stop you to rise. Just go ahead and rise. There is a level. You know how a rubber ring is. Listen carefully. You can pull it. You get to a point where it will swing you back in one day. So people rise up. Educated. My father started working at age 26. But when you get to a point, something happens. You know how the swine just fell down and crashed into the sea. That's how your whole life, finances, everything crashes down. What were they looking for? Bow to me and I will give you the keys. But they were certain koinonia members. Shadrach, Meshach, Joshua Selman, he said, this man, O king, have not regarded thee. Listen, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image. There are certain men who are prospering strangely in Zaria. And we have researched well and we found out that they don't serve idols. They love God with all their heart and yet they are rising. O king, give an answer because I thought you said for anybody to rise their soul must go but we have found certain people their soul prospers as their finances prosper the more they help their parents they are rising the more they, they are blessed prosperously they use that money and they are still fasting and praying even as millionaires oh king give an answer and the king said you mean it bring the boys next verse Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury stop it will never tire me to share with you my vision I don't share too many of my experiences remember I told you I know what this means it was in this area that I was praying and fasting and crying before God and all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared and then here comes a strange being like a dinosaur and looks at me the eyes is as one eye is as big as the head of a man two eyes fiery red eyes and the tail was a snake it had its own life although it was attached to that being and the being was looking at me and i was looking at it my god i didn't bargain for this what is all this now what is this? I'm a preacher that is just teaching truth and wants to help people and make meaning out of my life. And this spirit looks at me. That was when I knew that in the realm of the spirit, there is a soul thermometer. They measure the rising of men. Listen, I tell you this, my brothers and my sisters, believe it. When you are rising, there is a system. I will show you shortly. By the time you rise to any significant level beyond certain threshold there will be an invitation of certain guests and they will say gentlemen we have watched you we started watching your grandfather since he was a reverend we watch your grandmother as a prayer warrior nobody rose beyond this level what is these tongues you always pray every night and these koinonia messages you are always listening to uh, they are doing something that is threatening our continuity in your family. When that spirit appeared, I looked at it, it was looking at me. And this is what it said. So you think you can bring God's people into abundance. That was the conversation. Wow. What the 
devil is this? It was from that day I knew that men can be gatekeepers. They can, you don't knock when you have a key. You only knock so that you, somebody who has the key will open. But when you have a key, the Bible says you should knock because you don't have the key. But when you have the key, knocking ends. It was in 2007 I had a vision. Many things happened in that vision. But that was when the Lord revealed to me his wealth agenda for the church. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I mean people like Ejimi are really the ones anointed with the mantle and the grace for wealth. I'm just somebody who knows God and understands the counsel of God. Like Paul, I have met these spirits. I know they are real. So when I talk, I don't talk because I read a book. No, I've seen it. You see, there are things that when you see, you don't fear again. What, what are you going to be afraid of? The pride of men? Men that are like vapor? From that day, something happened to me. And I will give you the keys of David. He says, and you shall open a door that no man can shut and shut a door that no man can open you see let me tell you it is part of the burden of the apostolic ministry that god mandates you to laboriously go through that pain but it's not for yourself it is for the sake please be sensitive listen there is a grace from that encounter when i got that thing i knew is close not for me not for the ministry these horns will never lift up themselves their heads again my brothers and my sisters in any case you must give your soul to someone bow to me otherwise you will enter the fiery furnace do you now see why christians are the ones suffering more Aside from our pride and our refusal, the devil particularly made sure that he takes our case personal. The moment you are making an altar call, they are watching you from the realm of the spirit. You come out and say, Lord, take my heart, take my life. Lord, I know I come from a family of 70 people and nobody ever handed their lives to you. But Lord, let me be the first. I give you everything. And when you are in your room praying alone, shaka. Lord, I will change, I will rewrite the history of my family. That thermometer is rising in the spirit and is being watched. You think you are alone, but there are witnesses. And a day will come when you will just say, Lord, I vow to you that no matter what you give me, you will be Lord over it. The devil will say, no, come quickly. Meet this guy. This kind of commitment is the same thing as selling your soul to the devil. Halakbara, you are the mighty God. Hail, I told you, you are the glory. Halakbara, hey, you are the mighty God. Hail, I told you, you are the glory. Halakbara. One more time. Listen to me. Please listen. Every time you pass through faces and realms in the spirit, you are given three things. One, you are given keys, a symbol of access. Two, you are given an anointing 
to bring men into that experience three you are given an enlarged audience in the spirit god will cause men to hear what you are saying these are the blessings of sacrifice and the fullness of affliction in the spirit don't just see people getting blessed and think they were lucky or that they are just business people who understand business it's more than that my brothers and my sisters some of the people you see are forged from the fullness of affliction i have seen spirits and i have met with devils i know we are not financially dull but we know that there is a warfare dimension fighting for the soul of men we are able to focus today and teach the truth of god's word and not coerce any man under the sun to give because god has been faithful and he continues to be faithful there are keys that you hold that you will never fear their fears you will never call what they call conspiracy conspiracy we are not talking of this money mongering thing this appetite and loss for wealth that can make men kill for money please don't mistake what i'm teaching that's not what i'm teaching i'm teaching a battle for your soul that satan is using money to fight your soul he used your past it did not work he used your bloodline it did not work now he's coming by himself to fight A woman because of hunger said take my children as collateral that's what satan wants the wife of a prophet even in a man of god's house there can be hunger even in a prophet's house there can be hunger i came tonight to blow a trumpet in zion and to sound the alarm upon a mountain when I saw this in the visions of the Lord, I knew that if I don't teach this, there is trouble. Brothers and sisters, hear what I say. I saw hunger coming. I saw it. I'm not a false prophet. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not one person who will come out every time and tell you, God said, God did this. No. But I saw hunger manipulated by the gates of hell. It has nothing to do with economy or political party. This is Satan and the hunger continues to bring annoyance listen that hunger satan is bringing that hunger to scandalize a lot of men of god that hunger will attempt to scandalize many ministries because people will begin to rise up to say let's probe the account of this church let's probe the account of this man of god and in it many people will be found wanting and this is why the lord is teaching this so that there can be a system of escape because many of us are already following that route because of hunger you don't know the difference between your account and your fellowship account you can fetch from anyone and say god forgive me when i grow I'll, I'll manage it this is what the devil is planning and he will continue to make you in lack so that you implicate yourself and one day when you are well implicated he will boomerang you that's the mistake that many people have made today and it will take the grace and the mercy of God. You see these things I speak, I speak in parables. Hunger will make many people dip their hands in a pot that is meant for God. Hophni and Phinehas, they were just supposed to use the pruning fork to pick something out for themselves. But hunger made them to select the portions and brought ruin and destruction to their lives. go up the mountain and bring wood it's money not made out of wood it's paper not made out of wood he tells you the location you must go up the mountain i will take another there will be a part two of this but there is a warfare dimension and i want you to pray my brothers and my sisters listen to me there are gatekeepers the king of pyre himself is seated there by the time your father tried to get there and this thing struck them down but now you have come we have no time like the three hebrew boys oh king we will not bow i will be blessed yet my soul will also prosper i will not trade my integrity as a christian for money lift your voice and pray i like you to blast in tongues 
the kings of the earth who have benefited from their harlotry with her shall wail and say alas babylon that great city in one hour is your destruction come Shabakatakata, Shakatakatakatakatakate, Shaprokoto Pakato Sekete, Embreketo Sekelekata. Are you praying? Shabrando Skeparo Kato Sekelekata, Shakatakatakatakatakate, Kaprando Skeparo Kato Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Hallelujah. Listen. It is never about lack of job. It is never about lack of house rent money. It is never about your business crashing or your business failing. It is never about lack of customers. You are in a warfare that you are not aware of. It's a fight not for your money, for your soul. Satan, how can hold on, please? How can Satan be fighting for money? That's nonsense. He's only using money to fight for your soul. My brothers and my sisters, what shall it profit a man? I say it again. There are many people about losing their soul because of business, losing their soul because of money, losing their soul. Listen. I like you to pray and say Lord as for me my allegiance for you and with you is in life and in death lift your voice and pray Hallelujah. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh God. You are my El Shaddai. I decree. And I declare. That what you cannot give me. I will never receive it from anyone. Anywhere you do not take me. May I not go. Whatever you do not give me may i never get it lord i declare that the dimensions of wealth and prosperity needed for my life and your house pass it through me lift your voice and pray may i become your treasurer a steward of your resources
Apacatoske me baratos. Embracatoske pratesa seketa kato baratos. Pass it to me, O God. Pass it to me, O God. May I be a steward, trusted with the resources of heaven. Trusted with the resources of heaven. Trusted. Makatoske brakatoshe ketelekata. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare that my children and all those who will come from me, all those connected from, to me, because of my life, they will never beg for bread. Lift your voice and pray. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. I will be that savior in the name of Jesus. My children will never beg for bread. Hallelujah. 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 I like us to pray. And while we're praying, I'm going to give our sisters an instruction. Lay your hands on your womb. And while you are praying, tell yourself, you, I cut off my children from poverty forever. Whether you have a child or not, everyone lift your voice and pray. I cut off my children from the lineage of poverty, the lineage of hardship. I will not give birth to children who will be beggars. I will not give birth to children who will serve Satan because of the need for resources. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please give us Psalm 112. Quickly, please. Psalm 112. We're rounding up. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It starts with the fear of God. It doesn't start with a business idea. It starts with the fear of the Lord. That delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation until both your seed and generation were not talking of food to eat. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you this. The body of Christ is full of selfish people who just have enough to eat. They have enough to take a flight. They have enough to pay their rent. And so they think it is okay. You are a selfish person. Do not make the mistake of Esther to forget that you are also part of the Jews. When her man wanted to destroy the Jews, Esther said, I'm comfortable. And Mordecai said, do not think that when they finish with us, you will be free. There are families and there are individuals that are not begging for bread. So when they hear this kind of teaching, they say it's a waste of time. It's a wicked thing as a man of God. Listen, I'm preaching from my heart. There are some of you who have come here now with envelopes, with seats inside, waiting to bless me as a man of God. And I appreciate it. And it will be wicked if you are blessing me as a man of God and I don't empower you to prosper. How do you get the resources? Are you thieves? I'm able to preach and I'm able to spend time with God because my needs are met. My family is taken care of and then I can focus to serve the Lord and bless you. If the devil uses economic empowerment 
to scatter those things. My time will be spent on intercession for money rather than I will now leave the ministry of the word and start doing the matter of tables. I will never be the man of God who will raise men who are spiritually powerful and then economically down. No. When you start a move like this, you are usually misunderstood until you see the excellency of a balanced spiritual life and the convenience that it provides for you and your family. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Next verse. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and yet his righteousness, his soul will still prosper. That you can be a billionaire and yet your heart is completely not in those resources. You sit down here that a ministry wants to build and without coercion you write a check of a billion naira and say please all these night vigils of praying, bombing heaven, there are souls to be saved. There are teachings, there are, dis there are nations to disciple. Let me tell you, one of the worst distractions that can happen to the body is when they focus on talking about money money every time every service money is a cause and it's a distraction every service cannot be money now you see even evangelistic meetings after raising um winning souls as soon as the souls are busy writing their names they start raising offering i don't blame the men of god i'm not insulting them but i'm saying that's not the way it's to be done this is what gives license to men in the world to continue to abuse and harass any man of God anywhere. But my brothers and sisters, there are people that will do it right now. Empowered by the Spirit. That the level and the extent of the blessing of God upon your life will dumbfound principalities and powers. Yet your heart will never be lifted up. Your heart is still contrite because you have pledged your allegiance to Christ and Christ alone. Last prayer point for tonight. The controlling powers manipulating my financial resources. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. The controlling powers ensuring that I fail in business. The controlling powers ensuring that everything I do fails. Makato sekete breketo shalakata. Pray. The controlling powers that ensure that every good thing becomes negative in my life. I come against you by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Listen. The next time I will, it continues, we have to stop. What you have heard tonight is only one side of the coin. You must hear the other side. You run like this with this one side alone. You are running on one leg. As powerful as what I've shared is. This is a ministry of balance. I will show you the other side where many of us fail. But then it is sufficient for you to know tonight that the fight for wealth is not a fight for your pocket. It's a fight for your soul. Poverty has nothing to do with hunger. It is only a strategy to get your soul eventually. So prosperity also is not really about your pocket. It is also about a system of preservation of your soul. Are we together? I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. I testify that your goodness is real. My testimony, your goodness is real. I testify your goodness is real. I testify. Your goodness is real. Please make reference to my teaching, Activating Seasons of Greatness.
There I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor. And I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families and I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We're going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention, is diligence and mastery. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say, Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys have been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please, quickly. Genesis 41, from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37 the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you are there? One to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, 
Can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man? If you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. He didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that. Verse 40, thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and he cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ they are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel, they want crowd, they want grace, they want fame, they want popularity, but there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? 
A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, don't worry, don't mind what I'm saying. Just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now. God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exhort Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act. According to their several ability. He had tested them through time. And found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life. Especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about life when you are a man of influence you sustain an ability that causes men to love your god to love your principles that's influence the kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts right And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. P 
people who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and say, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. Uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more. got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's gotta be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are, not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy. Called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk, they cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph, same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. 
He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty man of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? The Bible says in verse 28. Seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous. Made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jesus. Seeing that he was industrious, he said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You too sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing. And make a lot of blunders. And when you step down they say Kai. Ken. Ah. That song. I say really. You, you see how you are deceiving yourself. We, Our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have 
have an apostolic, you go for a crusade, you see them, and you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people, they are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. So, uh, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12, is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. We're in a hurry to show quick success. We're in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor. 
that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia, he becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Twelve verse eleven. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He said, "Not slothful." The word "slothful" there means laggy. You are not. You are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said, "Not slothful in business, diligent." fervent, zealous in spirit, serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord, you want to serve his body, you must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something, as you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether the right apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place and when i went in i looked at his office and i looked at everything i said wow it's not about size it's about content are you getting what i'm saying it's about content at least i know that there is a project that they are on now projects of of hundreds of millions competence when you become competent let me tell you brothers and sisters all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter Jeroboam the Bible says his mother was a widow meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much but competence please there are many of us here it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents they didn't go to school they done their best don't sit down in the average day and keep forcing your mother your father the poor people doing their best rise up and change your status don't just sing it as a song is god speaking to anyone here i read the story of joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people joseph was 30 years 30 years and as a matter of fact out of that 30 years about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches 
and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church i already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream i guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor the first person you gave an injection had problem second person had problem that problem before you blame demons we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly but i told you that the biggest problem of africa is blaming demons you can't take demons to court you can't arrest them we we like the fact that they are invisible entities we excuse our failures everything demons you woke up by nine i know it's a spirit that that stopped me ha huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. Or as if you are the director. You are the CEO that will interview you was there by seven. You stroll around. You came late and say, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent.
Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And I have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. 
when he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave. You become a city that is set on a hill. That cannot. Cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available then that unction will come upon you it comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of god upon your life are you getting what i'm saying it's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit he becomes undeniable invincible no matter what you say about that person the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah uh, is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. 
that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you and they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace Lord you want to change our stories in this season we make room we make room we make room we make room we reject the spirit of laziness Time and chance happened to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all.
Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast love righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. 
insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven Let it rain Let it rain Open the hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separate those people right now one, two, three. Shake those devils 
I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God, I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Chains break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. Break it, take 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 it, from every chain, I break free chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains, chains of stagnation. <laughs> By the blood of Jesus, I break free. By the blood of Jesus, hear me. Listen, listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 it, take
Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cost you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus that blood opens the gates of captivity that blood opens that gate in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I declare every family under bondage free I don't care how long the doors have been closed we open it now you will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish fast. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. 
Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm <laughs> we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen. My dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother. This year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. It, this one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken. Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. 
Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is, there is. Newi. I know it's an Igbo place, right? There is, there is, a, there is somebody. I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You love God. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not. Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. God. To break every chain, break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You are. You know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you ask for money. I will give me money, sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? 
Help us now. Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So we went for so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did it stop working? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. He will come. Is that all there is to the story? So when I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this hole. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made that me yours. Please bring out. I 
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing so you must focus don't be distracted don't be distracted hallelujah Elijah said if you can see me don't don't be distracted please hallelujah please pass your request ushers let's hurry up please get them to the aisle just pass it to the last person the last person by the side please help the ushers inside and outside it's not a ritual there is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place please begin to pray in tongues as you do that please everywhere begin to pray in tongues all those connecting with us online it's time for them to connect now so that we can Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter. And brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here, no matter how long. Let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things, strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman, it's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation, the king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala la bala la bala la bala. Hey, se mara na na mosuri na 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 mas. Shapra pakata bala la bala. Rakata prato sopre kere bala la bala. Hey, mara na 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 mos. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh come. Every cry, every need, Lord, every pain. Lord, let things that look impossible by men. We pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalataya, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level, by the weapon of the prophetic, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I command those limitations broken. Human limitations, demonic limitations, I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. Makoto tekete. Zgeparata telekotopai. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear from your life now. I cause fear I cause fear, I cause fear. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor Dadala, the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb mazuka parata teleka in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are you that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place, help that please. It's time for you to catch this thing for real. It's yours for the taking. Listen, I want to pray. As I stretch my hands and pray, inside and outside, wherever you are, you must not be in ministry like fivefold. Whatever area, many of you will begin to have dreams, encounters. Listen, many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer i want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatikalai lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for jesus christ or at one time you have made a decision for jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of god and jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here i want to lead you personally to christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to jesus 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them koinonia as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever i denounce sin i denounce satan and i receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically i cause the power of sin from your life and i release grace upon you to experience that which christ has done for you in the name of the lord jesus everything that keeps drawing you to sin i curse it right now in the name of jesus god bless you thank you for this great decision please follow the ushers the gentlemen with the jerseys they will have your details and you'll be back to your seat god bless you